Hello my soccer universe. Don't let the kids outside deter you if they're making noise because uh, they're going crazy, honestly. Uh, it's all lockdown and so on. Whatever. Um, I decided to give my new Lyon jersey a debut. I think a 5-0 in the derby. Uh, so sort of Warren said and it's it's a really nice shirt. But I have to say this livers here <laughs> make it actually look make it look a little bit weird as well. But okay, I really like this jersey, I have to say. I'm very happy that I got that one. Um, what can we say for headlines? I think in Spain, it is very clear that Atletico keeps on winning and this time actually being quite convincing. Um, Real Madrid also bounces back from the cup loss, uh, Barcelona less so, uh, and the series scores another hat-trick. I think those are, to me, the biggest headlines. In France, yes, it's maybe the 5-0 win in the derby would be, but I think it's all about Marseille taking a nose dive of really, really epic proportions. I only hope this will make the wonderful away jerseys sometime uh, a little bit cheaper because it's really it seems to be that everything is going south with them uh, for the past month or so. And in Portugal, uh, I cannot give many headlines, but one is that Benfica again dropped points out of nowhere in a way. Let's get started. I really didn't watch much of any of these leagues. I think I watched most league. Uh, I saw some highlights. Um, so will be a weird video for me to watch but i listened a little bit if we i mean uh, the funniest result to me although i didn't see anything of it was uesca via real those are the two teams that we see the table they have the most draws of course they play a draw it's a very predictable result in a way uh sevilla wins uh three nil over cardiff uh with a hat trick by Siri, his second one uh, before i think he barely ever scored any like this he had even a fourth goal this this allowed for offside so uh pretty impressive then the probably the only live action of La Liga that I saw was a little bit of the second half, of course, after Real Sociedad had scored the two goals. And I thought this would be an easy win for Real Sociedad over Betis. But then I turned it off. Or I went away. Uh, this was my uh, mistake. Joaquin came on for Fekir. Joaquin also in the 39-year-old club. Assists Canales. Great assist in the 88th fifth and then gets the equalizer. Um, another rather disappointing uh, result for Real Sociedad. Meaning for me, you know, I had a Real Sociedad jersey and a Villarreal jersey up there on my wish list. I still want to have them, but let's see. They're not doing all that great and I don't think they will probably not go far if they keep uh, on like that in the Europa League either. Real Madrid, Sinan is done. You saw it maybe in the comments by El Futbolero. <laughs> Uh, that Zidane got diagnosed with COVID. He had to be on the phone or at home. And what did he see? A very uh, comfortable win for Real Madrid at Alaves. Casimiro Benzema and Eden Hazard is scoring a goal. Uh, to make a 3-0 at the half. Uh, then two goals after the half. Was easy for Real Madrid. Um, Barcelona. The less we say about this performance, the better. Frankie de Jong and Ricky Puch. Ricky Puch? Coming on the A7 and scoring the A89th, uh, getting the win for Barcelona. Um, Atletico, I mean, um, Vigo against Eibar 1 1. Atletico against Valencia. This is a game I should have watched. I decided on the NFC Championship game, and probably that was my mistake because I'm still a little bit depressed over the whole thing because that was a great game. From all that I examine, uh, if you just watch the highlights, even how they, uh, how the attacks of Atleti and, and also Valencia are going, but it was definitely more Atleti. It was a really free-flowing, uh, good game, a fun game came to watch. And Racic gives Valencia a great uh, opening goal, a shot from far out that curls into the corner. However, Atletico not deterred. Joao Felice gets some equalizer just before the half, and then who is always scoring? Uh, of course, Luis Suarez, and then the third goal probably was the pick of the bunch for Atletico. Uh, nice team goal where Llorente um, gets the ball, runs basically to the touch and pulls it back. Correa had uh, Schulz in Korea just come coming on for uh, Joao Felix before that. And yesterday in the evening, uh, Atletico Club formally back, uh, and probably they will be now the team that could written for the fourth Champions League spot, although I think this is rather severe. They dispose of Getafe 5-1, which, as I said, in the standings now, I mean, Athletic Club is still only in ninth and they are uh, more than 10 points behind. 
But I have to say, uh, since they have the new coach, they actually pulled off a few interesting results, uh, to say the least. On top, of course, at Lake Country, seven points with a game in hand. It looks really, really good, 74%. The two giants, Real Madrid and Barcelona, uh, behind. Very level in many ways. Um, and what else can, 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 can we say? Uh, yeah, on the bottom, we have now Alaves. Whoever think is a trap game for, for the big ones, but otherwise is a little bit in trouble. Uh, same, same can be said for Elche. The relegation battle is probably the most intriguing one in Spain. We do have to adjust a little bit. You see Sevilla moving ahead of Villarreal. Um, the adjustment doesn't change that. Actually, the only thing that changes is that Levante, Getafe move up and Vigo and Cardiff go down. And same thing with Elche and uh, Alaves. Elche still having two games in hand, although it is not given that they will win these, uh, given the opponents that they have, it's more like, like that they will lose this. Um, from the bars to the right, you can see the projected, I mean, 2.6 points, 2.6 points uh, per game for Atleti, it will project to 99, which is pretty uh, impressive season. Even if we just go with the expected, 86 is way ahead of what the Real Madrid and Barcelona are producing. It looks really, really good for Atletico Madrid, who are the positive uh, surprise of the season. And if we go now to the expected standings, you can really see that I, I have to say La Liga is probably one of the least less interesting ones this year because Atletico is so firmly on the first spot. Um, if you just look at the shading, also also the points range. I mean, 77 to 994, that covers the upper half of Barcelona's and Madrid's points. So uh, looks rather convincing. Um, but Barcelona and Real Madrid are head to head with Barcelona enjoying the smallest of advantages at the moment. That's due to the rating, and they are still three points behind. Sevilla set on uh, spot four, Villarreal more or less set on five, and the rest of them more or less set on six. And then there's this broad midfield where I think uh, from Betis to Getafe, those teams don't really have to worry about uh, relegation. Levante, da 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 da. Uh, I think the biggest name, of course, is Valencia. They are down there and they are not safe. The bottom two also seem kind of set. For the upcoming week, we have a cup round uh, starting to, uh, tonight with, I think, the two biggest games are Betis against Real Hotel and Sevilla against Valencia. I think Rayo against Barcelona is interesting as well, but um, we don't really have... With both Madrid teams gone, it is like a weird, weird, weird cup round. Alcoyane, the ones who beat um, Real Madrid, of course, now have to play against uh, Athletic Club. Will be interesting. And on the weekend, we have also a full round with, um, I think, two standout ties. Villarreal against Real Sociedad, the two teams that I want to have jerseys from, uh, must, I think, a draw is not enough for either, either one of them. Uh, you need to win to kind of keep up the ambition, especially since Sevilla is probably going to beg another three points at uh, A bar. And then an absolute Liga Classic with Barcelona Athletic Club. And given that they just lost, Barcelona just lost in. In the Super Cup final, there might be some added spice there. In France, PSG looks better. I mean, sure, it was helped that uh, Montpellier in the, uh, in the nine, uh, ninth minute wall was only down to the 10 men. But Mbappé gets back on the scoring sheet. Neymar uh, with two goals. Neymar is assisted by Mbappé. Icardi also on there. It looked all rather cohesive and convincing for PSG. And uh, it, I, it's, I will be hard, hard pressed to say uh, PSG is not becoming champions uh, despite me wearing the Lyon shirt. But I think the story is definitely Monaco and Marseille, and especially Marseille, who I don't think they will win many games of uh, what, 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 what they've come coming up soon. Having lost that loss in the midweek, they took a uh, lead through Radonjic and actually looked all right in the first half. I actually watched that game because uh, I was rather um, intrigued. I mean, la later Monaco came, came up and it was a, it was a really inter interesting, enjoyable game. Maripan gives Monaco the equalizer just after the half. And the game is going back and forth, but you can really see that Monaco is getting a hold of the, of the game, missing big chances, especially true Mane should have scored earlier, but he gets the lead in the 75th. Um, and then from then on, it was only Monaco. There was nothing. Uh, Marseille looked empty and done. Stefan Jovetic, uh, was it Stefan Jovetic? It's a, it's a Jovetic, uh, scores a great free kick to make it then 3-1. And that was that, um, I think, a... 
AVB, Anders Wielewiersbosch, is really on uh, close to the second. He more or less admitted as much to it. Uh, Ren loses his home to Lille, which basically keeps Lille in the hunt uh, for at least a Champions League spot, maybe more. Uh, da, uh, David giving them the, uh, the win in the 16th minute, I have not seen much. And as I said, Lyon 5-0 win over saint at Etienne. It's real role reversal because uh, traditionally saint Etienne was the much better team than Lyon and now um, Lyon is just rolling over saint Etienne blindly. Cadavere, Marcelo uh, with two goals and another one by Cadavere and then uh, Buanaga. Uh, Buanga scores an own goal, makes it 5-0 for Lyon. Which means that in the standings, the, there's no change up top. It's a lot in midfield, but you can really see Marseille was right up there just a month, a uh, month and a half ago, and now it completely uh, broke. On top, we have the top three within two points, which makes it interesting. But if I just look at goal difference, um, PSG is dominating that one, and then. Uh, I don't think Monaco will challenge for a Champions League spot and the Rennes probably is very happy to go into Europa League and then we have to see how the rest is going. Um, adjusting does not actually change anything, although we have a little bit of an even table. Uh, Lorient is, uh, had a game postponed, they will make now another game up, so two going games in a row postponed. But, presumably because of Covid and even with PSG not being in great uh, shape they're still very much favored to win the championship here in the expected standings it's even clearer I mean it has seven points expected they are the best teams then it's similar to La Liga there's two and three that's very very close Lyon a little bit the edge over Lille then with Monaco and Rennes behind and then there's a midfield uh, of teams that are not really uh, bothered with relegation up until Reims and then uh, starting with Saint Etienne, I would say that's the relegation zone, although there is a final relegation spot um, where Dijon, Lorient and Nîmes are probably the teams that uh, will fall into that one. Um, as I said, we have a makeup game uh, on Wednesday between Lorient and Dijon, uh, which will be very important for Lorient. Uh, both teams actually, it's a relegation battle right there. Both teams must win. Um, and on the weekend, I mean, it's a classic game between Lyon and Bordeaux to, to kick it all off. I think that's interesting. Marseille, Rennes was so much more interesting. Uh, at the moment, you just look at it and want to see how Marseille is crashing down. I mean, it, it's a spectacle in many ways. And although I never was much in favor of Marseille being PSG, PSG leanings and then beating Milan in the 93 Champions League I, final, it is... It, does hurt me a little because I think a good Marseille makes the league so much better. And also those nice jerseys deserve a better performances. Nantes against Monaco, also a classic, but you know, not very much down. Monaco very, very much up, so I don't think there will be much of a classic matchup there. Uh, moving to on to Portugal, as I said, I didn't see much. We had a few games postponed. It was supposed to be played on Sunday, Monday, maybe because of the cup, which we'll talk in a little bit. There was some moving around. Um, it's an incomplete round so far, but I can say Benfica had a draw and Porto won against last place Farense. Um, all rather tight results. Uh, Boavista will play against Sporting uh, tonight, so let's see about that. And Braga against Gil Vicente as well. So uh, for now, Pastos moves ahead of Braga, but we'll see in the adjust just able it, it moves back. A lot of movement to the uh, to the bottom. I mean the Portuguese. Uh, league, I have to say, is really top three, then the next three, and then the rest is all in the relegation battle, more or less. Uh, this is the way it looks to me. And a win, I mean, Belenenses was, I think, in 17th, now they're in 10th. It, a win can carry you up and down almost widely across the table. Um, as I said, if we just Braga moves up, interesting also to look at the green bars, sporting really outperforming uh, and I say this every week uh, Passos and uh, Vitoria as well I expect it standings it's not sporting that goes up there no it's um, uh, Porto they still expected to win the championship but then Benfica now dropped behind uh, uh, drop below sport, or sporting very clearly in the third place and also similar as the leagues above that we mentioned before in Western Europe you I mean, the championship, I think, is a little bit more open for Portugal, but the top three are pretty pretty much set, and then everything else is already falling in line, although the um, um, fight between Passos and Guimarães is an interesting one. Uh, we have, um, first, again, a cup round. 
it's already the quarter quarterfinals in Portugal, which is played from Wednesday through Friday. So this uh, in Portugal they have very weird it now. I mean, everyone usually plays it Tuesday, like in the, uh, the in the European competition, but Portugal shifts it by a day or two. So we will get in the next review video probably also a little bit of an incomplete picture, but um, not the really big mat mat matchup there. I would say that Mar uh, Benfica, Braga, and Porto should move on rather easily. And then on the weekend round, um, we have one big one on Monday, very, very late, unfortunately, between Sporting and Benfica. That is the next big, big one. And uh, Sporting probably has a chance to deal Benfica a little bit of a blow and kick them out of the title race the way things are going at the moment. Well, that's that. Uh, from this week from West Western Europe um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video drop a line below if you want to add anything as I said I didn't see much so uh, anything is welcome uh, especially in La Liga Liga and also a little bit Liga Nosh and yeah subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon bye hey there I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.